Hello Internet! With the upcoming release of the Avengers movie, which I still refuse to call Avengers Assemble, I've had a couple of people ask me a couple of things about the characters, comics, etc. in my capacity as occasional Marvel nerd and thought I'd take the time to explain something commonly missed when people talk about the backstories of the characters in the films, namely The Ultimates, which is a stupidly titled series of books which nonetheless had arguably a greater influence on the current Avengers films than the Avengers comics. Let's do this. In the year 2000, Marvel made the decision to launch a company-wide reboot where they could begin with new stories and origins for their superheroes and allow readers a nice stepping in point without having to trawl through 50,000 words of backstory on Wikipedia that results from decades and decades of dealing with the same characters. There would be modern stories and current issues and generally a more up-to-date feel to the whole thing. Unlike main rivals DC, however, they did this without a horrific multi-issue crossover arc involving destroying and creating universes that would take a PhD in cosmology and some strong narcotics to get your head around. Instead, they settled for a simple idea. Keep the original Marvel Universe intact and run both imprints alongside each other while stapling the word Ultimate onto the front of their new titles. This way, they managed to attract new readers without pissing off their existing fanbase. One of the first stories they printed after Ultimate Spider-Man and Ultimate X-Men had proven successful for two years was the clumsily titled Ultimates, headed up by comic writing strongman Mark Miller. The new start for the Not Quite Avengers had a number of benefits and made the whole story seem more consistent. Remember that in the original continuity, Captain America getting frozen and thawed out was kind of an afterthought after the Marvel Big Guns wanted to bring him back from a ten-year hiatus. In Ultimates, his backstory is established in the first couple of issues, and it seems that the whole super soldier thing has been a motivator for a lot of research over the years as people such as Bruce Banner unsuccessfully attempted to copy the formula with occasionally bad outcomes. The series also updated Marvel mainstay Thor by giving him a more ambiguous background and a cool new look which in my opinion had some definite influences on his current movie image. Remember, he originally looked like this. Cap's outfit in the recent movie also took some cues from the Ultimates, removing his silly little wings and generally looking more rugged and a little less like a leotard. Lastly, on the outfit front, there's the appearance of Hawkeye. Doesn't really need emphasising that they almost borrowed his look wholesale from Ultimates with no influence from the mainstream universe at all, since in those stories he dresses in purple and wears a skirt. Another contribution, story-wise, is apparent in his and Black Widow's backgrounds, namely that they are already S.H.I.E.L.D. agents who then get incorporated into the main superhero team. Possibly the most blatant change from regular Marvel, and one which demonstrates a neat circularity, is that of S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Nick Fury. Originally a beefy white guy, he actually got his own movie in 1998 starring the man himself, David Hasselhoff. For the Ultimates, Marvel decided to roll with a black character inspired by, guess who, Samuel L. Jackson. They even mention this in the comics, in a scene where the Ultimates try to decide who should play themselves in a movie version of the team. When the time came to movify the character, Marvel went with the Ultimate version and we ended up with Jackson playing a character originally modelled on himself. Never before has it been more true to say a role was made for an actor. If you think about it, Marvel using this new and updated version of its premier superhero team to inspire the movies, at least in part, makes a huge amount of sense since it makes characters originally created all throughout the last century into more modern and relevant icons with less ridiculous outfits. So what about future films? Well, we don't know what the inevitable post-credits clip might reveal, but two characters that could definitely do with screen time are superhero couple Hank and Janet Pym, aka Giant Man and the Wasp. These guys are in the mainstream universe too, but as with the characters mentioned before, their ultimate versions are significantly more consistent and have much less baggage. We'll have to wait for that one. Sadly, after the first two volumes being regarded as among the best graphic novels of all time, The Ultimates was handed to writer Jeff Loeb, a man responsible for the execrable Red Hulk stories, and someone not at all familiar with the Ultimate Universe. As a result, Ultimates 3 was incredibly mediocre, and featured a bizarre shift in some of the characters and a not altogether coherent story. What followed for the characters was the result of possibly the worst decision ever associated with a comic book lineup. Jeff Loeb was let loose in a massive crossover event called Ultimatum, in which a jaded Magneto causes cataclysmic global upheaval which, in literally a few pages, kills off an enormous chunk of the ultimate character lineup. This wasn't even the usual level of comic book death where the characters ambiguously disappear, presumed deceased. This was full-on graphic slaughtering of some of Ultimate Marvel's best-loved characters. 
Wolverine has his skeleton ripped apart and is basically completely vaporised. Doctor Strange gets crushed until his head explodes by a mystical demon in the chaotic aftermath. Daredevil drowns. Professor X has his neck broken. The Wasp, Janet Pym, is found by her husband, and this is particularly nasty, being eaten by the Blob, who in turn gets his head bitten off by the enraged Giant Man. The result of this hideous mistreatment of well-loved characters was outrage. The series was torn apart by critics and derided by fans. Sadly, Marvel didn't take the entirely sensible decision of declaring the whole event to be the badly thought-out rubbish of a crap comic writer, and instead went about trying to clear up the mess with sort of reboots under the new Ultimate Comics banner. The task of re-establishing the Ultimates went to Loeb, and was predictably terrible, you'd have thought they would have learnt by this point. Mark Miller, meanwhile, came back and started on a new series about a sort of black ops division of the Ultimates, codenamed Avengers, which sort of brings everything nicely full circle. Anyway, Marvel have been very good with the movie universe so far, and I'm optimistic that the Avengers won't disappoint. Hopefully they just never let Jeff Loeb near the screenwriting, and everything will continue going smoothly. So that's a brief history of all this stuff. I'd recommend the first two Ultimates, each comes in two volumes, as they're very well written, require no prior reading, and are generally really good fun. Uh, if you still want to learn more about all sort of sorts of comic book things, I would recommend going and reading Wikipedia, uh, worryingly, comic book lore is about probably the best maintained area of the entire encyclopedia. So there you go. Anyway, that's all from me. Goodbye!